Hey, greetings, Fred and Alaska. Thanks for joining me. Um, on my next video, I have an update on uh, one of the Christmas Day uh, episodes that I had uh, I shared from Vincent uh, Wassley. Um, I actually had a chance to talk to his sister, Grace. Um, I'll be updating that uh, from her point of view. Uh, they were the ones that got, he heard the scream and uh, found out later that they had seen it. Anyway. I'll, uh, on my next video, I'll be updating that. Um, what I wanted to share with you today, um, we'll, we'll say her name is Martha. Um, she is from a remote, uh, Aleutian village. We'll just leave it at that. Um, because the community is so small, she, she really, she had a hard time sharing it and asked that I didn't, you know, share anything too pertinent and I'm going to respect that just because she had a hard enough time coming forward um this is a a little person experience a little people um what happened to her is that she was at her grandpa's house um in this remote village and her grandpa's house was the farthest house away from the rest of the the village um by about a half mile now this happened to her when she was little um she Family members had left to go hunting and what have you, and she was left there to tend the house and do some other things. Uh, Martha right now is uh, approximately 84 years old, so we're, we're going back, um, back quite a ways. Uh, this, uh, I believe she said, uh, happened right around statehood or just before statehood. So she's doing her thing. Um, she's young. And she she had already did the chores, the house cleaning and everything, and she was prepping food for everyone when they came back from the hunt. Um, one of the things she would do is go out to the smokehouse, retrieve uh, salmon, dried fish, you know, dried seal, what, what whatever they had, bring it in, put it on the windbreak, and as she set up the table, she would bring in from out there. Now. <clears throat> When this happened, uh, they had been they they were gone. The hunting party was gone longer than anticipated. Um, they got caught by darkness and, and and rough water, so they had to stay where they were at basically and hunker down overnight. And she didn't know this till the next day. But so she gets everything ready and she has the dry fish and and seal meat and and whatnot out on the windbreak as she normally would do. <laughs> as she is doing her thing and kind of anticipating everyone coming uh she realized it, it had gotten dark and they're probably not coming so she wanted to not leave everything out on the windbreak she figured she'd bring it in put the dry fish in the sink and what have you right and so she goes out onto the porch and when she goes out onto the porch she noticed the seal meat is missing and immediately is like she knew she had got the seal meat had it there and it's missing all of a sudden so she kind of looks around, make sure it didn't fall off the, the little, uh, it was like a little wooden table they had kept the stuff on. And uh, she noticed it wasn't there. So she steps out off the windbreak, down the little steps, and she goes back over towards the smokehouse. And uh, is basically a cache. This particular cache was dug into the ground. It wasn't elevated up because they didn't have brown bears that would climb or whatever. So <laughs> she goes to the dugout. And notices the door is kind of kicked open a little bit. So as she's getting close. Now it's getting on in the dark. So she's using the last little bit of light she can see. To get into this little dugout. And, and grab some more seal meat. To, to make sure just in case they did come home late. That she would be ready for them to be able to eat. Now. When she gets up to the door. And notices it open a little bit. She immediately backs up. Because she thought she heard someone talking. So she's, she spoke out. Uh in Yupik and you know ask who's there who's there and it got quiet and so she backed away and she got really scared for a minute and, and kind of squatted down along the tundra the the cache was kind of up a little bit on the rise on the hill because it was dug in so she backed down and kind of hunkered down to kind of see who who was going into the into their smokehouse their, their little cache area so as she's sitting there she notices two figures come out and scurry off very fast. Uh, she said uh, they moved so fast it was hard to keep track of them. They ran off, went down the hill, and were out of sight. 
she got spooked out, uh, didn't grab any seal meat, went, retreated right back into her grandpa's house. Uh, she got inside, and as she was sitting there trying to figure out, well, who, who are those two people? They were, they were too small to be adults, and I know all the kids. So she's going through her mind trying to figure out who it was. <laughs> so as she is trying to figure this out, she hears the same similar kind of talking on the porch. Well, when she came running inside, she didn't shut the outer door. She had left it open. And she so she creeps over to the door and she's trying to listen. Now, she said it has been a very long time, but she said it sounded like they were speaking Yupik as well. And, and she sat by the door listening to try to figure out, recognize voices. Uh, it, it was just quiet enough and, and garbled enough she couldn't quite make out what was being said. And so as she's sitting there, she she's scared. Um, you know, she was young, very scared, and, and just trying to, like, figure out what the hell's going on. And as she's doing so, she's hearing a thumping sound. Thump, thump, thump. And, and she's trying to figure out where it's coming from. It, it it sounds like it's right by her. What it was actually was the window back in the kitchen behind her thumping. Someone was thumping against it. She turned around and looked. And whatever was there ducked down out of the way. She just caught some some motion in the window. So she, immediately she's like, who who is this? So she goes over by the sink and is trying to look out the window and everything. Now... In these days, they only had kerosene lanterns. They didn't have electricity there. Um, she had some seal oil candles or, or uh, what have you, candles with animal fats. And, you know, she was trying to hold up one of the candles and say, hey, don't, don't be playing games or what have you. No response, no answer. She continues to hear the talking on the porch. So she goes, she retrieves... Uh, one of the handguns, they had a old Colt 38, uh, little five shot revolver, brake top, you know, that type. And she goes and gets it. And basically to make a stand as she starts calling out, I, I have a gun. You need to leave. You're not welcome here. She hears scurrying gone. So after a few moments, she takes one of the lanterns. And goes out on the porch, makes sure that it's all clear. All the fish that she had brought up was gone. All the seal meat that she had brought was gone. She shuts the outer door and locks it. Retreats back inside and is sitting on uh, one of the chairs. It was her grandpa's chair. In front of her grandpa's chair is an old spool that they used to roll out wire on, right? This one was a, a real old one. And... Uh, so she's sitting there and she has that spool and she sets the pistol on it. She has the lantern right there. And she's kind of just sitting there trying to figure out what has happened. As as she's doing so, she she's sitting there and she hears some someone coming up the steps and then hears knocking. And it it, it was knocking and she didn't know who it was. So she, you know, who is it? Who is it? It was a neighbor. It was a neighbor down the way, and the neighbor came asking her, was she messing around on their windbreak? She said, no, I've been here. I was trying to get food ready, and I, I saw what I thought were kids run off with the, the stuff and, and, and kind of gave the neighbor the rundown of what happened. Neighbor says, and kind of didn't believe her at first and started, you know, kind of chastising her about playing games. You know, people could get shot. You know, you don't go stealing from people. And she, I didn't steal nothing. And she, she explains again, I saw these little people look like kids and they ran off really fast from, you know, our cash. And this is what I'm dealing with, you know, and, and she points out, I, I, I got my grandpa's pistol out. I got the lamp, you know, the lamp and everything. I, I'm, I'm not messing with you. The neighbor sees and then starts to believe her and says, okay, we'll stay here. I'm going to have my wife come sit with you until your family gets back. Neighbor leaves. Uh, it's dead quiet for a while. And it, she said about 10 minutes or so later, she hears someone coming up the steps again. 
And as she hears that, she assumes it's the neighbor's wife coming to sit with her. So she wants to be courteous. She gets up, goes, opens the door with the lamp. When she opens the door with the lamp, she said there was at least three little people she could see. She said they had really round faces, really flat faces, and similar to what Russ Black shared with us, uh, a weird shaped nose. She said the faces weren't necessarily scary but different um she said they looked like a very dark leathery look um like a like a buckskin type but darker and once she brought the lantern out onto the porch she said all their eyes were just pitch black there was no white no nothing uh she said they were like uh just just black and once they saw the lantern they all scurried off real fast again and so she's she's freaked out, shuts the doors, backs up, gets the gun. Moments later, the neighbor comes, shows back up with his wife. And as, as they're coming up, she's got the gun and she's she's yelling, "Don't come in! Don't come in! I will I'll shoot! I'll shoot!" And the neighbor she hears the neighbor say, "Hey, you put the gun down. We're coming in. Don't shoot!" So immediately she's like, "Oh, thank thank goodness! You know, someone's someone's here." She goes, sets the gun down, opens the door, and lets them in and tells them what happened. You know, says, hey, right after you left, and, and so on. And the neighbor just kind of looks at her and, and goes, okay, well, I'm going to I'm gonna go look. Uh, I'm going to use your grandpa's gun because I didn't bring mine. Because, again, this is this is a small village on the Aleutian chain. There, there's not a lot of land predators around or anything like that. So, grabs her grandpa's gun, goes out. Um spends time out there she she doesn't remember exactly how much time but he spent time out there comes back in and tells tells her and his wife uh get your stuff we're all going back to our house so you know she was raised by the village so to speak so she didn't question anything an elder okay we'll, we'll go back to your house you know so she leaves a note Got, went to the neighbors, what have you. There's something weird going on, whatever. They leave. Once they got back to the neighbor's house, that's when the neighbor started talking about what he saw. And her words were, well, what she remembers him saying was, is he went out to go and check out the cash and all that stuff. And he saw five of them. And they were all just right in front of the cash. They had their backs to him or whatever. And he called out to them. One of them turned around and then ran off, same direction she had seen him run earlier. And what was weird is that he was looking at the other four facing away from him, but it seemed like they their figures, their shapes just kind of melted away. Uh, just, just, in essence, disappeared. Uh, but it wasn't like a poof disappear. It was more like a just his word was melted melted away just melted into the background like they weren't there and uh i want to thank martha for sharing that um she she had some trouble recalling some of it that she said there was more to it but she she couldn't remember offhand but just to just to be a young kid to sit there and all of a sudden be confronted with something like that um because she had always heard about the little people, they're mischievous, uh, beware of kids, they'll steal the kids, you know, things of that nature. But not, she didn't realize uh, just how scary it was going to be. Because even in her age now, when she thinks back on it, uh, it, it makes her very nervous. When, when I talked to her, she repetitively got nervous uh just just reliving it in her mind there was long pauses in between you know uh what she was sharing and i, I had to be patient for that you know what i mean um but i want to thank her for sharing and uh again the update uh from uh vince's sister uh will be on my next video uh before the new year i'd planned on doing it today but I, I just didn't have time i wanted to share this little people uh tale with you and uh We'll catch you guys on the next one.